bringing news that matters to you. You're watching The Bahamas Tonight, Northern Edition. And welcome back, everybody. This is the Charles Hayward Library doing its part to promote Bahamian history. And it comes as the country prepares to celebrate a milestone. Well, Megan Shepard will explain for you tonight. These are Charles Hayward Library annual summer camp instilling Bahamian pride in our future generations. Executive Director of the Library, Geneva Rutherford, notes that because the important holiday falls during the summer months, it is important for adults to share history and knowledge with the young people. The real importance is if we don't teach children about what it means to be a Bahamian, they will not know what it entails when they grow up. Uh, there is nothing that's more critical to a person than their national identity. The camp teaching the kids important facts such as the national symbols and our country's nation builders. Parents showed up as they watched and beamed with pride as the campers put on performances displaying their Bahamian pride. These 10 and 11 year olds sharing what they learned. Today's independence celebration was that even though you listen to um, music in the States that people are still proud to be a Bahamian and that you shouldn't make people feel like you're more into the U.S. culture. You should listen to Bahamian culture every now and then. Some people think our generation don't know about Bahamian culture, but we do. I learned about the Tree of Life, which names the Litnam Vaidi. And I learned who sings, who made up the national anthem of the Bahamas. They taught us a lot about it. They said how it's important to us and how we should celebrate it every year and that how the Bahamas is rich in culture. Megan Shepard, Sedanes, Network News. Well, the City of Freeport Council opening its annual summer camp this week. Uh, 200 students are a part of the camp and at the end of the four weeks, campers will be more equipped with the knowledge to be successful students. The camp director, this Charlene Wright, says she looks forward to actually being a part of the camp. Um, a lot of activities, including academics, uh, outdoor sports, including tennis and basketball, swimming. We have computer, sewing, etiquette, um, and some other activities. So we're also going to take them on field trips every Friday. The familiar faces over and over. So there's something that the City of Freeport Council's camp is offering that attracts the, attract the children from year to year. And um, I must again commend the City of Freeport Council for continuing to pump the funds into this camp. And that was Camp Coordinator Suzette Bazed. And now we can tell you that the camp uh, instructor Charlene Wright says the kids are simply having a wonderful time with it this summer. Children are a gift from God and it's a privilege to come every year or whenever the opportunity arises that we could come and share together. Um, we learn from each other. Um, even though that um, may not, we don't have them year round and just the summer, it's a beautiful experience. And the camp is going to be running all the way through until the 29th, and that's going to be a lot of fun for our kids. Uh, summer camps are generally a fun uh, time for kids, and in the East, the campers are learning the importance of life lesson skills. Italia Hall has got this one. It was dedicated to children who live in East End and who wouldn't have the opportunity to attend the camps in Freeport. This healthy head-to-toe camp focused on nutrition, exercise, safety, and the environment. Facilitator Kelly Albrey and coordinator Susan Lee say the kids are very open to learning. The kids really, you know, just took in what we had to offer. They learned a lot about hygiene and the environment and safety. And they all love it. They can't wait to come back. Um, in, t in terms of uh, attendance. Um, we rarely had more than one child absent. They came back every single day. Um, they hug everybody. They're, they're going to miss. We're all very sad today because we're going to miss the children just as much as the children miss us. Member of Parliament for East End, Peter Turnquist, also helped to drive home the message of a healthy lifestyle. We have a high prevalence of, of obesity. And so we're hoping that some of the skills that we teach the children, they will teach their parents uh, and we will con contribute to this overall idea of, of uh, improving the health and well-being of our country. Um, we've been doing this for four years. Uh, it's been very successful and we've seen some of the results. The Grand Mama Shipyard has gotten involved as well. 
training manager Don Barb says it's a privilege for the company to give back. The earlier we start to shape the characters and deposit into them, these are the same people in whom we get our employees from. And so anytime we have an opportunity to give. We are located in Freeport, but we really invest in the whole entire island. These campers shared a little bit about what they learned during the camp. This camp was, was like, it, it was a new ex experience for me. And it, and it, just, it was just to, to get it to get out of the house and, and don't stay in the house and play video games and watch TV all day. I learned I knew you could do yoga and in yoga boys are called yogi and the girls are called yogini. That you must brush your teeth every morning, it's the first thing you do, and you must eat fruits and vegetables. It's Halia Hall, ZNS Network News. And a man on a mission to promote healthy eating is uh, using yet another avenue to get this message across. Let Megan Shepard explain. A husband and wife duo aiming to spread health education through the release of two new books. CEO of New Life Natural Vegetation Jamal Monker says that his book aims to spread the authentic Bahamian brand to the world and boost medicinal tourism. We are getting people from far and near, celebrities and people of high social status to buy into the No Life brand. And we have a, a lot of people that are going to be coming over here. They're going to be flying over for this event. And I think it's going to be a good boost for Freeport Grand Bahama. The book, Take Back Your Health, The Ultimate Guide to Bush Medicine, will explore indigenous plants and their many benefits. We're speaking about shepherd needle that we use at New Life a lot. You're just trying some of the juice. Uh, we bake bread with it. We make smoothies with it. But I also tap into the medicinal properties of the shepherd where our grandparents would bathe our skin. If we had sores, if you have a rash or any type of skin issue, you topically can apply it. You can also create a poultice from it. And I'm going to be developing a soap from shepherd needle, sage, scourge needle, a lot of different things. We also talk about uh, um, the, we have the milk thistle. Uh, we have the wild callaloo. We have a lot of wild edible plants. That's very important because a lot of behemoths don't know that a lot of the plants that we purchase in the food store, like the, the salads, like the, uh, the spinach, the callaloo, uh, the dandelion greens that are so expensive, these things grow wild. And they are right now, yeah, they're free of charge and they're more healthier because they're, they're free from chemicals and pesticides and herbicides. Monker says that all of the information is based on traditions passed on through the generations. He says he also spent time in various countries, such as Peru, Mexico, Africa, and Honduras, studying the scientific properties of bush medicines. I born in an era where there was no food stores. There was no hospitals and clinics and nurses and doctors. So we live that which I speak of in this book. So the information is not conjecture, rhetoric, or hearsay. It is direct information that has been passed on from generation to generation. Monkart's book will be released this July 11th, along with a cookbook written by his wife, Shanique Monkart, titled Vegan Temptation. The cookbook will provide recipes using these healthy alternatives. Megan Shepard, S, Network News. It's that time of night, folks, when we ask the doctor. into Rocca. Recently I was asked a very important question about multiple sclerosis, also known as MS. So today we will continue our discussion of this interesting disorder. MS is an incurable disease that can cause progressive disability in those affected by it. The cause is unknown and is considered an autoimmune disease in which the body's immune system attacks its own tissues. Most people can have a relapse in remitting disease course. This means that they experience periods of new symptoms that we call relapses that develop over days or weeks. These relapses usually improve partially or completely. They are followed by quiet periods of disease remission that can last months or even years where the patient has no new symptoms. In the majority of patients, the disease advances over time and eventually they can develop a steady progression of symptoms with or without periods of remission, known as secondary progressive MS. 
This worsening of symptoms almost always involves problems with mobility and walking. A minority of persons with MS experience a gradual onset of steady progression of signs and symptoms without any relapses. This is known as primary progressive MS. So if you know someone with MS and you have questions, please email askthedrbahamas at gmail.com. I'm Dr. Monique Pratt, and this has been Ask the Doctor. And we're going to take a break, and when we come back, we'll turn our attention to sports.